Hey, if you have a Foxbox project coming up and you have to attach something to the EPS, we want to help you with that and just help you understand how to test before you apply anything to the foam of a Foxbox project. So we have to start with the basics. This is a, a glass of water and water is a solvent. And the reason it's a solvent is if I put a sugar cube into it and I stir that, the water actually dissolves the sugar cube. So that means water is a solvent. If you look in the dictionary, solvent is anything that will dissolve another product. So what is a solvent against EPS? That's what we're trying to find out. In 20 years plus, I've tested lots of products and it's been very few that have eaten the foam. Very rare that that happens. So I have some examples here. Here's a silicone that we tested. Um, a mono, this is probably the most common in the industry for dimple membranes and around windows, things like that, comes in any color. Uh, then we've got our glues like the PL products. This is the PL300, the most common glue in the industry for foam. But truthfully, I've tried all the different PL grades and they all work fine. At least they did for me. So I'm, there could be one that eats the foam, I haven't found it yet. No more nails. Tried that one as well. And uh, then you get into your specialty ones. This is DAP 3.0 Concrete Masonry. Uh, we've used this along a driveway that went right along our foam. Worked just fine. So what I do for testing is I take whatever I'm using. It could be a liquid waterproofing or a peel and stick membrane or a tube of, of whatever it is. I put it up against a scrap piece of foam. I test it by putting it on there and I trap it right away and then I check it the next day and if it hasn't eaten the foam, the odds are it's going to be good. The trick is any chemicals or solvents that are in these products, when it's trapped in between two layers, that's when it can go to work and start eating things. So I've tested all of these, none of these eat the foam. So you'll see that further on in the video. but. We did have one waterproof membrane. It was a liquid applied, spray applied product. They sprayed it to the foam and then they put a water or a um, protection layer against it right away. That protection layer trapped the chemicals and it ate the foam. We read the instructions. The instructions said it's acceptable for ICF. You spray it on and you allow it to, I think it was 30 minutes you had to wait for the chemicals to flash off and then you could put a protection layer on. We didn't wait that 30 minutes. We had a problem. So follow the instructions. That's key for all of this stuff. But just so you know, there's so many products on the market today. We can't test all of them and there are new ones in different markets all the time. If you have one that you want to use, very easy to do a quick test on your site and then you'll know and you can be comfortable with using it. So watch the rest of this video. Hopefully it helps you guys. And um, if, you, if you have any other videos you'd like us to shoot, just put them in the comments below and we'll see what we can do to do that. So hopefully this helps you guys and uh, thanks for using Foxbox. Hey, I got a call from a contractor who wants to know what kind of caulking he can safely use against um, Foxbox. So I told him, you know what, just test it. We always do that with peel and stick membranes or anything that you're going to put against foam. You always want to test it first. And so this is how we test it. I went and bought some samples. Uh, let's see here. This is about the lowest grade one. Doesn't mean it's bad. It's just the lowest price in the $2 range. This is by DAP. It's an acrylic latex caulk. Very commonly used. We use that a lot of times for dimple membranes and things like that. And so I'm going to test that one. Then I've got this Dynaflex 230. This one's going to be in the $5 range. Then I've got this Mono Ultra. Now this is interesting, it's an exterior grade caulk, this one's grey, comes in any colour. But I read through all the instructions, I have no idea if it's an acrylic caulk, if it's got solvents in it. You'd think they'd have to put it on here, but a lot of times they don't and you just don't know what you have. So I bought it, we're going to test it. Let's see, I've got uh, LePage 2-in-1 Seal and Bond, Rain Guard, Exterior. So we'll try that, see if it eats the foam. Then I'm going to a polyurethane. I, I love these ones. They stretch like crazy. Uh, this one's got 35% joint movement. Uh, premium polyurethane sealant for concrete and fiberglass. Hey, what if it works for EPS? We'll find out. Maybe it'll eat the EPS, maybe not. 
This one's kind of neat. Concrete and masonry, self-leveling, no tooling required, paintable in an hour, can be used minus 7 Celsius to plus 49 uh, Celsius. I don't know what that is Fahrenheit, sorry guys. But that's a DAP 3.0 it's called. This one will run out and run out and run out, so I got it over my pants when I was using it. Then we've got the Mono Silicone Max. That's just silicone, and this is in the $10 range. So this, these ones that I tried, I just grabbed random ones off the shelf, and they're anywhere from the $2 to the $10 range in price. Um, some of them tell you what they are for acrylic or latex or polyurethane. Some of them don't. So what I did is I put a bead of it onto our foam and then I pressed other foam on top. And the reason I did that is when you trap any kind of a sealant that has a sil or a uh, solvent base, that solvent might eat the EPS, but it might not. Who knows? You got to test it. And if you have a product that you don't know if it's going to work or not, test it and do exactly what I'm doing right here. So I did two samples. I did two because some of them, they take seven days to cure. Some take one day to cure. Some of them, they say you can paint them in an hour. So I'm going to start peeling this off and we're going to see what it looks like. So the top one here, this is number one, two, three, four, five. I did seven of them. This is the DAP, the low grade, the $2 one. And if I peel that off, ah, look at that. It's still wet. So it's not... Um, eating the foam at all. If I look at this, you can see it's not eating it at all. Not sticking too good either. But you know what? It's not cured yet. Here it is. Here it's not. So let's see. This is the uh, Dynaflex 230 latex, $5 range. Oh, and I'm peeling three of them off at once. And you know what? None of them ate the foam. You can see that there. And they're all a little bit wet. Now this is uh, about 40 hours after I did it. So it's not 24 hours, it's about 40. So I did it early afternoon and this is about 10 in the morning uh, on the second day. So let's do the next one. Ooh boy, this stuff stretches like crazy. This is the DAP polyurethane concrete. And I can peel this right off here. got a nice stretch going on but it's not cured yet either I can see um, I can see here it is but in here it was still a little bit wet and let's see this last one here oh wow these are um, two dollar range to the ten dollar range and we're seeing a difference I can't get either of them off There we go. Ha, ah, look at that, it took the foam with it. Those ones work not too bad. Maybe if I did that the right way. So now that was the DAP Concrete 3.0. That stuck like crazy. And so did the Silicone Max. The silicone Max, that kind of surprises me. Okay, so let me find that part. This is it here. This is the um, 3.0. It stretches, my goodness it stretches. And it holds onto the foam, and if I peel it off the foam, there's no evidence of it eating the foam. So there you can see it. It did not eat the foam at all. And the last one kind of got away on me. Can't find it. Well, anyways, I can peel it off here. There's no evidence of it peeling the foam at all. So, all seven of those that I tried were safe with the EPS at Fox Blocks. Now, I'm going to leave this one on for a week just to see if it does eat the foam. Probably does not. But I would suggest. If you guys have anything, peel and stick membrane or anything that you want to put up against Fox Blocks, test it. 
just put it up against some foam and trap it between two layers of foam. So just grab some scraps, put it together, and the next day take it apart and look at it. If it's not eating the foam, it's probably not going to eat the foam. And that's what we do, and that's what we suggest you do. So we're not saying that any of these are safe. We're just saying that we didn't see any evidence of it eating the foam. And out of all seven of these, there were two of them that stuck in about 40 hours, probably quicker than that. And I wouldn't be surprised if these ones here will peel the foam off and stick really well. It just will take longer to cure. So I'm not saying any are better than the others. Every one of them has its use. You just find the one that's going to work good for you. And, uh, and that'll be the way it is.